Ukrainian Evangelical Theological Seminary has been serving the Church for almost 30 years. However, our life uh, was dramatically changed after 24th of February 2022. when Russian Federation started full-scale invasion. Russians, they were less than five miles away from the seminary. And seminary was between the, our army and the Russian army. It was like in a gray zone. So our students and faculty, they were like locked between. And it was a huge challenge for us, how do we evacuate our students and staff? And uh, in that moment, first five or six days of the war, it was extremely stressful because there was no way to evacuate people from our campus. And in that moment, you know, it was hard to see that God is with us. However, now when we look back, we look backward, we can see that Jesus was with us because it is only He who could orchestrate everything in a way that we evacuated our students and faculty and staff and then we were able to evacuate hundreds of other people from our area. And uh, after we evacuated our students, we started our relief ministry because at that moment most of grocery stores were closed down because Kyiv was almost surrounded by the Russian forces. And uh, elderly people, uh, women with children, they were extremely vulnerable. You have no public transportation, you have no grocery stores, you can purchase medicine. With our small team, we have been able to touch thousands and thousands of people. So um, God gave us grace to, um, to serve our nation as never before. At one point of time, we were informed that it is too dangerous to stay on our campus. We still had a small cohort of volunteers. So we decided to follow this instruction and we left our campus. And after two days, our campus was hit by six Russian missiles. It was very emotional for our team, for me, to come back to, the, to our campus. And when we arrived, uh, we realized that yes, our campus was hit and uh, we lost uh, 162, I guess, uh, windows, doors, roofs. At, like at first I was thinking, okay, what, what shall we do? How we will restore this? But uh, then um, we just uh, told to ourselves that we won't give up. Як ви бачите, ми поранені, але ми живі, і ми віримо, що ми відновимо наше служіння у повному офісі. During this renovation, we made such result as rebuild two roofs on our campus, on maintenance department, and we made half of roof on our cafeteria. Also, we repaired more than 180 windows all around our territory, let's say. And we made more than, well, let's say, 90 doors, the things that we were repaired. And the most beautiful day for me was when the first students start coming to our campus for our church meeting and for, for studying. Since that time, uh, the seminary volunteers have been embarking on regular relief trips to the frontline towns, cities, villages to help civilians there. In partnership with the Ukrainian Bible Society and our brothers and sisters from a wide network of churches, Christian organizations and missions where our students and graduates serve, We've been delivering humanitarian aid to different places in Chernigiv, Sumy, Kherson, Donetsk, Luhansk, Kharkiv regions of Ukraine. 
last winter, which really was one of the harshest winters in the history of modern Ukraine because the Russian army was deliberately trying to target and destroy critical infrastructure in Ukraine, uh, trying to leave the Ukrainians without electricity, without heating, water and other utilities, making them freeze. Uh, our focus was on winterization items, such as power generators, uh, chargers, fuel, and it was done uh, to help people literally to survive amid regular blackouts. When we returned back to Kyiv in May 2022, we saw around a great um, opportunity of people who was in need. Seminary was very close to Irpeny and Bucha and some villages like Moshun, Mostyshe, Hostomel and these villages was destroyed very badly. So we started to feed the people. At the seminary we feed people three times per week. People was coming to the seminary and we was giving them food and we had the opportunity to talk to them. And also for two days we've been taking food outside of the seminary to village like Mushun, Bucha, Horenka. When we met people, we are trying to not give them only meal and food. We are trying to talk to them and give them our love and say that God, He loves them so much. And we had the opportunity to pray together and say that they are not alone, we are with them, and God can take care of them as well. We always believed that education has a critically important significance for ministry of the church. During the war, it became even more important to provide relevant biblical training for our pastors, missionaries, church planters, worship leaders, counselors. So um, we, we are convinced that Ukraine has no future if the gospel of Jesus will not penetrate and transform our society from within. So now we pray to the Lord, God, give us whole Ukraine. Give us this opportunity and strength and wisdom to touch whole nation. So this is our dream, this is our desire. Probably in the first few weeks uh, after we came back to our campus, we started developing uh, several new programs that would help people with uh, trauma to, to get over it or to deal with it. And especially for church leaders who are serving as volunteers, we decided that they really need new programs, short programs that can help them to deal with that and to help the people they, they are serving. So one of the programs we started during this period of time was a short uh, first psychological aid program. We also discovered that it is quite helpful for people to have uh, something related to art therapy. And considering that we ha still have lack in specialists in trauma healing, we uh, decided to develop this program at our seminary. And we continue to develop programs we already had, uh, introducing more emphasis on PTSD and trauma to help people who are serving in our churches to do it more effectively. As you probably know, uh, a lot of people uh, left Ukraine because of the war, and it's also affected our churches and also our worship uh, ministry because a lot of worship leaders they left uh, and uh, now we discovered that there is a bigger need in developing leadership, especially in worship area. So uh, this is what made us to think about new approach to worship and a short term program that would help church leaders who are involved in worship to, to build uh, their new teams. And we also developed a few more programs that would help people who are serving in basic needs uh, and who are trying to, to find ways to worship God in a ways that would be mission appropriate, that would help people to heal. 
we also want to develop, develop uh, the attitude that our worship must be inclusive and we have to take into account all the experiences people are going through right now. So one of the topics we are trying to cover and get uh, more into it is how can you worship during the times of challenge, suffering, and how can you integrate that experience in your worship, in your knowledge of God or sharing about it. In the light of the ongoing protracted war, uh, we uh, faced three major challenges or issues in the area of leadership. First one is the lack of leaders due to the war. Many leaders uh, have migrated or they've been temporarily uh, internally displaced and it has to do with the security of their ministry, of their families. Uh, so that's the first uh, area that we uh, have some challenges. The second is that those who have remained in leadership positions, uh, they are at the verge of uh, emotional exhaustion, or as we would say, uh, they are at the verge of burnout because of overwhelming, unprecedented challenges that they are facing because of war. And then there is a third uh, issue or area uh, that the leadership is facing, and that is the young emerging leaders who have uh, happened to be in a position of leaders but have no knowledge, no experience uh, and no needed skills in order to lead the people in the times of crisis. So uh, these are the issues that uh, uh, we are facing and uh, our programs, uh, especially the program in transformative leadership, is trying to take these uh, current uh, challenges into consideration and see how we can uh, help uh, either those who are at the verge of emotional exhaustion or those young leaders who have happened uh, to be in uh, the leadership but have no uh, needed knowledge or experience or skills. Also, uh, one of the way how we responded to the current crisis is our short-term uh, program, which is called Mission of the Church in the Time of War. Uh, and we are trying, this program is specifically aimed at these young leaders who uh, are now uh, in the position of leadership. We are trying to provide them needed knowledge in the area of a Bible, especially uh, those passages or those stories that deals with the conflicts, with the war, uh, with the evil, uh, with uh, the relationship to the enemy. And also this program touches on very practical issues, how to minister to those who are temporarily displaced or uh, those who have suffered from losses or uh, different uh, forms of trauma, how to serve to the families that were separated by war and other very practical issues. One of such short-term programs is the so-called uh, social ministry workshop. As a matter of fact, uh, many churches in Ukraine have turned into hubs where Christians help people uh, they host them, provide assistance uh, to different war victims, uh, including internally displaced uh, people. Uh, so within this program, uh, we've been analyzing how to be more effective in this uh, social and relief ministry. Uh, already three cohorts of students have completed their studies within this program. They've developed their uh, projects uh, and uh, presented them. Uh, this project is to be implemented later in their towns and cities, their places. It's also known that many church leaders, ministry leaders uh, had to move or even migrate because of imminent danger, active warfare or loss of property. Some have been recruited or voluntarily joined the army as uh, chaplains, personnel, medical personnel, for example. Uh, it means that many new leaders uh, had to take their roles and fill in leadership positions at Ukrainian churches, 
Christian organizations, missions, ministries. Uh, in other words, today in Ukraine there is a drastic need in raising competence of a new generation of church and ministry leaders who uh, will later lead their congregations and ministry at the wartime and in the post-war period. And actually, uh, this is our focus in our master's program, uh, Mission in the Modern City. That's what we consider, analyze there. So we are continuing our holistic or integral ministry in the midst of the war. We are doing full-scale educational ministry both in Ukraine and Central Asia and also we are heavily involved in relief ministry in the area of Kiev and also in east part of Ukraine and south part of Ukraine. So we try to serve our nation in all ways that we can see, that we can serve. And um, this is a critically important moment for our history, for our nation, when church can impact our country, our nation as never before. When church can be a community of healing, restoration, and we pray and hope in future a place and a community for reconciliation. But for such important ministry, we need to have more faithful and competent ministers. So on behalf of UETS community, I want to invite our international friends and partners. Please join us in serving our nation. Help us to touch our nation's heart. Help us to disciple our nation. Help us to bring the gospel of Jesus to our country and our nation. May God bless you.